Hey everybody, I'm Oliver Joyce and welcome to a uh, Swords and Sandals Crusader Redux update. This one is pretty anticipated because I guess a lot of you are wondering about what's going on with sieges in the game. In the original Swords and Sandals Crusader, sieges was were kind of an afterthought. They were basically a mini game that you played where a catapult would go up and down and up and down and you press a button and for angle and power and it would sort of be you know luck and timing whether you knock down the castle wall in this new edition of the game sieges are much more tactical and require a bit more thinking it's turn-based now and you have a lot more options so we're actually going to go through um an attack a siege attack in uh this video and also a, a siege defense so um I'll take you through those and some of the various options, and I, I hope you uh, enjoy it. All right, without further ado, let's jump into uh, Sword and Sounds Crusader Redux Siege Battle Preview. That's quite a mouthful. All right, here we are in Sword and Sounds Crusader Redux, and the first thing you're going to notice is the game is not in widescreen. The final game will be in widescreen. Uh, just when I'm doing the development, I keep it in the sort of 4 3 ratio, so you're not going to see uh, you know, a, a game that stretches out to fill your screen. It will happen though, because I remember in the comments from the earliest Crusader video that people were going, oh, why isn't it in widescreen? Uh, it definitely is. Um, or you can play it in window mode if you wish. The first thing you're going to notice about this is there's a bunch of troops on the screen, 57 offensive troops and 57 defensive. Battles can go up to 100 soldiers each, uh, so they can get nearly twice as big as this, which is kind of cool. Second thing you'll notice, there's no sound yet. Sound adds a lot to the game. Uh, sound and music is such a big part of games that, you know, um, it definitely, you know, loses something without it. But please bear with me because this is, of course, a work in progress. Um, all right. What you can see up here is King Lionel versus Bors the Mighty, who, of course, the uh, captain are uh, the leaders from the um, first campaign and the ones that I'm using while I develop the game. Uh, we have, we're a level one character. We have two essence, which means I can use two commands in this siege. And a morale is fair. And Bors is the same. We have 57 people in our army and with one catapult. You can buy up to three catapults. And you can actually upgrade the boulders to do more and more damage. You can upgrade them quite a few times. Uh, they have three tower, two towers and a main wall. If you knock down their towers, uh, you will get a gold bonus. A gold chest appears and you get um, some extra gold when you um, win the siege. If you knock down their main wall, you rush through and the second phase of the siege begins, which uh, isn't tied into this video. Um, I'm not going to program that yet. But you'll appear in a courtyard and you'll defeat them, hopefully, and the um, province will be yours. When you defeat enemies in their castle, they're knocked out of the game as well, which is a, a very important component of each campaign. So idea is get in the castle as quick as you can because the um, advantage is with the defense in general. What you see here is a bunch of options, uh, similar to the main battle in that you have powers you can use, you can retreat, but instead of being able to send troops in to fight other troops, you can't actually attack each other uh, individually. You can only reach them via a series of tricks. So we can fire arrows, we can use our catapults, we can use our colossus to actually punch through the walls if we wish. Uh, we can use ranged troops to scale the walls with ladders. Heavy troops can ram the castle. And um, cavalry can do nothing because they're on horses. What are they going to do? Um, first of all, let's show you the traditional catapult approach. And this is very similar to Sword and Sandals Pirates, which uh, this engine is using. Uh, all you could do in Pirates is basically um, use catapults. You can attack one, two, or three. Fire tower, near tower, main wall. Let's try the fire tower. Uh, high arc, 50% hit chance, 40 damage. Low arc, 80% hit chance, and 20 damage. The more powerful your boulder, the more uh, likely you are to knock down the tower completely. So let's go uh, low arc. We hit the wall for 20 damage. They've got 80 health left. They fire uh, catapults in their turn. Uh, they have three catapults. You always start with three catapults as uh, an enemy, and you can, of course, upgrade the um, boulders in enemy uh, castles as well, in your own castle as well. We do a catapult again, fire tower, try a high arcing hit, see if we have any luck. That missed, it's a 50-50 chance. You can actually improve that by improving your Siege Master skill. 
So we lost a cavalry troop there. You don't want to hang around too long when you're attacking in sieges because eventually they will pepper your army with arrows and catapult uh, boulders and so on. So much that if you finally break through, your army might not um, have enough firepower to actually defeat them. So let's try firing some arrows. You don't get to choose who you're targeting, unlike regular battles, because you can't see over the wall. Try it again. Pepper them a little bit. As you can see, they're doing more damage to us uh, than we are to them. But um, if, you run, if your catapult is destroyed, you may have no option. Our catapult's health is quite low, so sometimes you have no option but to fire arrows. If you have 100 um, range troops in your army, you might actually be able to take out a good portion of theirs. Uh, so there's lots of different tactics you can try. You can, of course, use powers. Um, airstrike actually damages the enemy castle's walls. Let's check that out. So um, that did some damage to all three walls. You can upgrade your airstrike as well to do more and more damage. Unlike the first Crusader, I don't want you to be able to level up all the way to level 50. So I'm actually going to be tweaking how, um, what the level cap is for the game. I want level ups to be um, a little less frequent because it felt a bit ridiculous in Crusader to level up so often. We'll see. Um, you know, you can raise the dead. Let's try and we can bring one of those guys back from the dead. Yeah, so we raised all those uh, troops. They'll come back. In the um, final version of the game, King Lionel and the good characters and the neutral characters, actually everybody except Antares, I don't think they'll be allowed to use Raise the Dead because it doesn't make sense. That's a necromantic power that only Antares has. Everyone has their own special. So uh, it might be um, leadership for Lionel, airstrike for, you know, E chaos, whatever it is, um, you will be able to level up some of those powers, but um, I want to make each leader a little bit more unique. All right, so um, we can smash the enemy walls with our um, Colossus. I'll show you that. Colossuses do, Colossi do major, major damage. Um, but in the final version, so I'm still tweaking it. As soon as you start attacking with your Colossus, they will start targeting your Colossus and you might, um, you can take some serious damage. But what I really wanted to show you in this uh, Siege version was the ability to ram the castle walls or um, scale the walls. Let's try ramming the castle now. So your, <laughs> our dead guys hang on like that, that's a bit weird. But um, a magically, a, a battering ram has appeared, which is kind of fun. So uh, we can ram the castle wall, we can do it again smash uh, now notice they've begun to prepare boiling oil that's a red flare that disappeared then meant that uh, the oil has been heated up in the pots and they're going to probably um, pour down our guys and if they do every troop that's standing under the wall has a 50 50 percent chance of dying so it's very risky to try these battering wall techniques and also you're not allowed to retreat once you're at the front of the wall we'll try it again so the wall is going quite lower. They choose to use their catapults. I've actually got to work out the AI for that a little bit because they need to know that if there's someone under there, they might, you know, they should pour more oil on it. But that's a, a, something I'm tweaking over the next week or so. Try it another time. And are they going to... No, they're using catapults again. What we're going to try now is um, scaling the walls. So with our light troops, they now have built a ladder. And this is a multi-part attack. So you um, press it a few times. So they're using the catapults a lot, and I really need them to use their boiling oil. That's uh, something I'm going to tweak. Raise ladder. And we'll try that one more time. Four-part attack. Oh, they've used their boiling oil. Okay, so we lost nine troops to that. Uh, it's very devastating if they actually do it. So you have to sort of um, be a bit lucky. Now our ladder is at the wall. We can actually storm the castle. And this is a luck-based thing based on how many light troops you have left. Let's check it out. So they've climbed the ladder there. I'm going to try and storm the castle. We're going to need to roll an 18 because we've hardly got any light troops left. We can actually pray for luck, but it actually lowers the morale in our army. So if we um, lose this, um, we need to roll a 16, then um, 
soldiers from our army might end up retreating. Let's see how we go. No, we failed that. So they have to climb back down again. We try again next time. Boiling oil has been prepared again now. So let's get in serious. We're going to raise the ladder. Oh, lost a lot of troops there. So it's risky. Try it again. Let's roll that 18. Oh, we came so close. It's so really a tactic you want to try if you've got a lot of light troops. If you've got like 50 light troops in your army, uh, your chances of scaling the wall is pretty high, and that might be a great tactic. Same with heavy troops and ramming the wall. If you have a lot of heavy troops, they do like two damage per troop, so you can really take down the wall in a few hits. Um, we'll try ramming the wall again. Yeah, we're down to only two troops, only four damage, so that's not going to work. Uh, let's smash through the wall with our Colossus. So now chests appear. We've got 120 gold. That's cool. Um, the Colossus, of course, isn't available at the start of most campaigns. So by the time you have a Colossus, um, a, a castle wall shouldn't be a huge impediment to you. One more hit should do it. They've killed our heavy troops. Smash through the walls. And now we can run into the castle. And then, of course, the um, siege phase turns into the battle phase so that is what i'm actually working on today i'm going to connect the two phases together and you'll appear in the courtyard after this now i'm just going to show you quickly the defensive phase of the siege because it operates very similarly to the attack phase with a couple of subtle differences so let's jump over there now all right so welcome to the uh, defensive phase of the siege uh in this um version we're defending and of course our castle is on the left they're milling about in the field over there and we're all bunched up nice and tight in the castle. We can't actually attack them directly. They can't attack us directly because the walls separate us. Uh, if they break down the walls, they will move into the courtyard, similar. So we have slightly different options. We um, can't, you know, scale walls or any of that kind of thing. We can boil oil, though. So if I boil oil in preparation for them, uh, when they decide to ram the castle, the oil will be ready and I can drop it down on them. We can fire arrows at them, pepper their troops. Um, for some reason, it's bugging out a little bit. So um, they were getting a free ca uh, catapult hit when we really shouldn't be. They're ba uh, ramming the castle at the moment. Okay, so that is also a bit buggy. The uh, troops move to move down a little bit, and the ram needs to move down. Uh, I've only been working on the defensive say, uh, phase of the siege for the last couple of days, so uh, lots to be done. There's always more to be done. All right, let's pour oil on these guys kill most of them they all fail their savings through sad times uh, you can of course use your power as well uh, we can call lightning that's an ability that of course you can upgrade and make it even more devastating we took down a bunch of them there hurt their um, colossus as well they're going to keep ramming the castle uh, we can boil oil again we can use our catapults when you use your own catapults uh, as a defender you don't get to choose who you um, target because it's a fixed catapult or the power it's basically fixed uh, we can boil oil again and hopefully take out these guys this is on, with only one troop left he's unlikely to be able to take down my wall uh the moment i'm working on the ai for the defenders as well so they need to you know think about shall we scale a wall they've got a bunch of light troops so that's what they should be doing he's dead okay so um we can use another power. We can do an airstrike on them. See how that goes. Yeah, it's taken them out. That extra catapult hit it might be a bug as well. Um, fire arrows. This doesn't feel like a very fair um, siege in that the enemy AI is too stupid at the moment and they're not getting all the turns they should. But I wanted to show you it anyway to give you an idea of what the... Uh, defensive siege would be like it's actually been pretty tricky to do uh code wise um i wasn't going to do it because it was actually just a little too much work but i thought you know um and it's not something that happens often but i thought you know you guys deserve it um and i want to make crusader redux something a bit special catapults when there's only um colossus left um, oh, see, he should have been doing that earlier, smashing our walls. Uh, and that is something I'll fix up this afternoon. 
poor Gyax. And we should be able to take him out there. Yeah, they're still trying to launch their catapults. They don't have any left. So there he goes. He's dead. Alas, poor Gyax. All right. So that is uh, a victorious defensive siege. Um, absolutely a work in progress, that one. But um, there was enough to show you in the video. Uh, and let me know what you think. Um, is a siege is something that um, appeals to you? Is this something that you... Um, uh, looking forward to in Crusader Redux. What else are you looking forward to in Crusader Redux? What do you want um, kept and changed and that kind of thing? There's not that much I can do at the moment to um, you know, change the course of the game because it's quite set. I'm hoping to launch late July, maybe August. You know, um, My timing's just been all out this year because of the pandemic and, you know, of course, uh, baby on the way and everything. So, you know, the game's done when it's done, but it's going to be fun. I think you will enjoy it. Speaking of enjoying, if you enjoy this video and you want to subscribe, absolutely do so. I love having um, everybody um, on board. The channel is, of course, small, but it is growing, and I try to answer as many comments as I can. It's a, just a great way to keep in touch uh, with fans of Sword and Sandals and you know, fans of Whiskey Barrel, <laughs> whoever they may be. Uh, I certainly appreciate it, and um, you know, without the fans, I've always said, there is no Sword and Sandals. Until next time, my friends, uh, I hope you're enjoying Crusader and the development, and uh, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am enjoying making it, which is quite a lot. And until next time, bye for now.